Whoopsies. Uh, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Uh, sorry, I didn't get to stream on Tuesday. I had a killer headache. Don't know why, probably because I was so tired. Um, but here I am now. We're about to start case five. I have no idea what case five is about because they didn't show any previews of anything. So uh, we're just gonna get into it. The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. Let's go. The Hound of the Baskervilles. A hound it was, but not such a hound as any mortal has ever seen. Its eyes glowed with a smoldering glare. The whole of its ox-sized body- Oop, there goes. Baskerville Hounds. I think I either read this one or watched the BBC Sherlock series episode of it. But I think the BBC Sherlock kind of changed it because they're like, ooh, chemicals, like experimentation. Or that's what it seems like? I don't remember. それは確かに犬だったしかし明らかに尋常ではなかった目は高校と燃え上がり猛牛ほどもある体育に獰猛な青白い炎をまとっている血を這うような息遣いとうなり声私はあまりの恐怖に震え上がったダンダンダン見たまえワトソンホームズは魔獣を見据えて言い放ったこいつこそバスカビル家に代々語り継がれる伝説の魔剣なのだ。OK。Our first two months in London passed by in a flash. Oops, I forgot. I'm trying to read the screen. In that disconcerting courtroom experience, we were first thrown into on the day we arrived in the country. And in Sosekisan's terrible ordeal that had followed closely behind, we had emerged victorious. However. There then came an abrupt end to our opportunities to appear in court. Which was hardly surprising, of course. Since I was nothing more than an amateur, an unknown student in the law of law from a faraway land. So life in our little office was very quiet. That is. Until it was shattered one. Oh! Oh, host, thank you so much for the follow! Also, happy Thursday! Hope you're having a good day. Uh, it was shattered one day by that fateful telegram. Bum, bum, ba -da. April 15th, Narahoro's legal consultancy. But he's still like a student, so he shouldn't have a law office. Anyways. <gasps> it's filled with stuff now. That morning. I was woken by the unreserved knocking on the door by the telegram boy. But after he'd gone. Susan's behavior became very obviously strange. Um, Susan? Yes! Is it time to leave for court already? Let me see. What case is it today? I don't think I'm scheduled to defend anyone at the moment, am I? Oh, no, of course not. How silly of me. But I think Iris said she would make us breakfast this morning. So shall we go down to Mr. Sholmes' suite? Yes. Iris makes the most delicious breakfast food. She does, doesn't she? And once our bellies are full, we can leave for court in fighting fit form. But we're not trial yet, what? Let me see, what case is it today? <laughs> Here we go again. Uh, well, I'm gonna examine stuff. We got a stove! It's spring at last and the weather is warmer now. But I love the smell of the fire and the steam rising from the kettle. Oh, would you like some tea, naruhoto san Thank you, susato san but I'm alright for now. But the green tea susato san makes for, for me from time to time, Iris's unique herbal infusions. Huh? Hmm? Huh? Hold on a sec. No. Ugh.
Sorry about that little mishap that I need to settle. Anyways. Uh, with the green tea Sosa to Sun makes me from time to time, and Iris' unique herbal infusions. This place is paradise for a true tea lover. Green tea is such a wonderful co accompaniment to British tea cakes, don't you think? I love matcha. So delicious. So this is a tea set that Sosa san brought with her from Japan. Let's hope she hasn't noticed me slipping sugar and milk into my cup when she makes it. It's just so bitter. That's the point of matcha, though. Tea is a drink to be enjoyed, naruhoro san You really don't have to force yourself to drink it, you know? I don't like to see you screw up your face, though. She calling you ugly! Uh, mop... Shovel? That spade has been here since we started renting this space. Oh, that's not a spade, naruhoro san It's a shovel. No, shovels are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a spade. No, spades are for digging. That's for scooping up loose material. It's a shovel. I don't want to dig a hole for myself, so let's leave it. Oh, is the shovel the new stepladder ladder argument? Hey, no, I want to examine this ladder. I've investigated it thoroughly, but I can't find anything out of place. No, the ladder though. We've only been here in London for about two months, but my desk is starting to look a little messy already. You could tidy up once in a while. This is the sun. I always say, making a mess is a small sacrifice to pay for being able to further your studies. And time spent tidying up is time you can't devote to the same cause. And time spent on ridiculous arguments is time that could be better spent on some simple housework. Yes, clean up after yourself. She wins, but I'm supposed to be the lawyer here. Morning, boss. Hey, Monkeys, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Friday to you. <laughs> it's almost weekend time. Woo! Ah, the Dharma doll I brought with me from home, still with only one eye colored in. I said I'd color the other eye once I won my first court case here in Britain, but... But you have won, haven't you? Twice, in fact. Because I feel as though I'm still lacking as a lawyer. I tell you what, why don't you color the other eye in once you think I'm a proper, fully-fledged lawyer? If you insist. She's never coloring it in. She's gonna be like, you scrub! You will always be a failure. Where's the audio? Can you not hear the game audio? Oh, had you muted? Oh my gosh, Regal freaking me out, man! Tales of a Rise, you getting it? Artsy, long time no see, I hope you've been well, dude. Happy Thursday. I, okay, so I want to get Tales of a Rise, but I want to get it for PS5. And I'm not getting the PS5 until a pro or a slim version comes out. And since the PS5 just recently came out, I don't think a pro or slim version is coming out for years. So I probably won't get it for a while, but that's okay because I still have Tales of Berseria, Zestiria, and... <sighs> I had another one. I bought another one. Zestiria, Berseria, and... I had one more, but I have at least three more Tales games on backlog. So yeah, it'll give me time to catch up to a rise. <laughs> and then Nanojack could come and help me and give me tips when I'm sucking. Abyss, was it Abyss? I think it might be. It might be Abyss. But yeah. Are you getting a rise? Ah, this must be the telegram. Let's see. Ah! No, you mustn't look at that. Not under any circumstances. All right, I won't. I'm sorry, Naruhoro-san, but you can be very mischievous at times. Then put the telegram away if you don't want people looking at it. Give you tips while you're sucking. Regal, you, you got a dirty mind, sir. <laughs> but did I really say that? Tips on yeah, I guess I did. Oh no, whoops, I missed the tank. That's awesome though, you won't be missing anything if you've got more Tales games on your list. Mm-hmm, exactly. And I, ugh, like I showed you guys last time, right? My backlog of games, let me, ugh. Ugh. Like, just, just looking at all these, 
I still have to finish Dragon Quest XI and Persona Strikers, five strikers, and then I gotta start Nocturne, and then I got all of Danganronpa, all three games. And actually, I don't think I'm gonna stream Dragon Quest Heroes, or do I want to? Maybe. But I've also got like uh, Naido Kusunoha to finish, and Persona 4 Golden to finish from like years ago. Ugh. So many games, so little time. Still have to stream the 15 event and 14. Should I stream that? I feel like it's gonna be very short though, no? It's not gonna have like its own raid like the near raids. The near storylines did, right? Maybe I'll think about streaming it. Uh, we were rather lucky to find that old aquarium left behind here. The prawns we put in there are doing rather well, and the anemones too. Why do you have prawns? It's a wonderful invention, isn't it? The sea behind glass inside your room? Another example of Great Britain's greatness. Having to clean it out and change the water isn't so great though, is it? Just one short stream. Mm. And then maybe I could just like play around in Golden Saucer to uh, get more uh, coins for the mount. Do you know, I've never seen inside your room there, Susato-san. I've never even peeped inside. I should think so too. A young maiden's private chamber is a place of bittersweet secrets, you know. Whatever you say, young maiden. Is that everything? Uh, I think that is everything. Wait, yeah. Yeah. Really, I can't examine the ladder? Bah. Okay, then I will, um... Should I converse with her? The telegram, yes. Hey, Smith, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. It's gonna cost you 200k for the mount. Yeah, I don't even have 100k yet. Do I? I don't remember. I, I really need to get on the fashion thing, though, if I really want to boost my, um, my, my gold rack. So, what was it about? The telegram that was delivered this morning, I mean. Oh, uh, a telegram? I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, but you're not going to get away with that. No? I didn't think I would. Actually, um... Don't give it a moment's thought. It's nothing. Nothing interesting. Boring, in fact. Ahem. It was just a boring old telegram. That's three times now that she's tried and failed to convince me that it was nothing. I promise that I'll tell you about it at some point. Alright, I understand. Then maybe I should leave Fashion Report comes out tomorrow? Okay, so does that mean I have to do the Fashion Report by tomorrow, or tomorrow is when it comes out to do the new one? Sorry, I'm going to you for all the 14 help. Sosaki-san. <laughs> I suppose Sosaki-san will have arrived back in Japan by now, won't he? Yes, I should think so. He left immediately after that terrible ordeal. Which would mean he should have comp completed the voyage already, or just be a few days away. A fortnight ago, we had that very long telegram from him, do you remember? Complaining of seasickness. But by and large, it seems the voyage has been going well. Is something wrong, Naruhuru-san? I was just wondering, what might have become of Sosaki-san had he stayed in London, that's all. You mean, as regards Lord Van Zeeks, the Reaper? Yes, I can't help wondering if seasickness would have paled into insignificance in that case. Whoa, new dialogue. You have to do it before the week resets Tuesday morning. Okay. Got it, got it. Then maybe I'll play some 14 tomorrow. Depending. It might be like a late stream though. What is it they say? That no one who stands in the dock can be safe from the Reaper, right? Like the way that nightmarish trial ended on the very day we arrived in London. Even two months on, the cause of that dreadful fire is still a mystery. 
Yes, but at least Soseki-san is safely out of the country now. Presumably that means... That the curse of the Reaper can only take effect within the confines of the city of London, perhaps? Even if that's the case, it's little comfort. I have a terrible sense of foreboding. I don't. If the legend of the Reaper is to be believed, it would mean he wields the Sword of Justice himself. Come to think of it, I wonder what he's been up to those past two months. Surely, not wielding that sword against more acquitted defendants. No, I don't think so. Apparently, Lord Van Zeeks hasn't appeared in court once since our last encounter. Oh? Yes, since Sosuke-san's trial, he's withdrawn from judicial service again, it seems. Until we have our next trial and then he'll show up again. Really? Just like before, when he wasn't seen in court at all for several years. So, it's just been me who's had to face him in his recent spate of trials, then. Ugh, just my luck. I wonder if luck doesn't come into it. Sorry? What was that? Oh, nothing. Never mind. Hmm. Then maybe there's a reason why, um... Why Van Zeeks kept showing up when I was there? Because maybe he was originally supposed to go up against Kazuma. Because Kazuma was originally the um, the lawyer that was supposed to be here. Morning, Reno. Morning, Susie. What is that violin playing? Oh gosh. Good morning, Iris. <laughs> um, Iris. What is it, Runa? What is that terrible noise? It sounds like a cat being strangled. Ah, oh, yes. You noticed that, did you? Hurley isn't in best form this morning, it seems. You must love your skills and your arpeggios. Hello. Hello, Mr. Sholmes. Where's Waldo? Hey Alex, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! Where is Waldo? Yeah, they should really like hide a small doll and like fight it! <laughs> Who recorded me playing? I mean, um, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> how go to things? The things go well. I'm tired from exercising. Ring Fit Adventure? If you- if you're thinking about getting it for the Switch, if you have a Switch, pretty good. You get a decent workout, especially if you're not used to going to the gym. Man, I am like wiped. Today I did a lot of squats, so my knees are killing me. <sighs> Good morning. Ooh, a good morning to die, perhaps. What? <sighs> Traumatic, dude. Has something happened, Mr. Scholz? You look miserable, and the way you were playing the violin before... <laughs> My analytical mind is dead. Music is dead. The world is dead. Workout toast, that's bread that's puffed up. Mmm. Oh, man. Have you ever had brick toast? Or have you ever heard of it? It's like toast that's like this thick, but then they like have tons of honey and ice cream and like fruits and some other stuff, depending on what flavor toast you get. But it's so good. Oh, I want some brick toast. Damn this blanched existence! That's all it is, my dear fellow. Nothing of consequence. I'm afraid I don't understand. Well, Iris, isn't it time we ate? Some dry toast and insipid coffee for me. If it's not too much trouble. There's a cat. Hello. You look like Kenma. Oh look, it's Wakahai. Wait, is that um Soseki-san's cat? Good morning, boy. Oh, it's so cute. That must be some sort of a tiny door for cats to use. But how did it get there? Well then, everyone, time for breakfast. Oh, wonderful! Let me help you, Iris. Ugh. It would indeed be a fine day to die. <laughs> ah, I 
knew something looked different. Something missing from Mr. Sholmes' desk. Where's the analytical analyzer machine? Where is it? Uh... Look at Mr. Sholmes' desk. It's completely clear. Isn't that enormous machine usually on it? We can never hope to understand what goes on in the great detective's mind, Mr. Nadhodo. Why, next time we're invited, we may find he's vacated the entire suite. That's scarily plausible, actually. Is there anything else we can examine or should examine? Because everything, like, we basically saw last time. There's all sorts on these shelves. Chemistry apparatus, books, papers, and lots of things I've never seen before. It's all heaped up so high, I can't help feeling that the whole lot is going to topple at any moment. Oh, it's such a charmingly untidy co collection of paraphernalia, isn't it? It just looks messy to me, like my desk. But you, Mr. Naruhoro, must learn to tidy up after yourself. No favoritism there, then. Seriously, such bias, Susato. Why are you so mean to me? Uh... Oh, wait, like examining this again? The fire's burning comfortably in the grate again today. It's a very different feeling to a Japanese hibachi somehow. Oh, look at that photographic print of a lady displayed on the mantelpiece. Could it be? Yes, it must be. It's the woman. Oh, how exciting. Is that supposed to mean something to me? Whoa. The woman? Oh, is it supposed to be Irene? Irene, what's her last name? These are all mementos of Mr. Sholm's past cases, I think. If he'd been involved in my case, I wonder if the beefsteak from La Carnival would be on display here. Gross, it would rot. A mystery shoe, a curious hammer, some mysterious dancing men, a bust of Napoleon... Ah, what an entrancing collection. It looks like an untidy assortment of junk to me, rather than, like, rather like what's on my own shelves. Well, you really ought to learn to keep your things in order, Mr. Naruhodo. No, no favoritism there at all. One of my sisters is called Irene? Ooh, nice. I know- I knew a girl named... Iris, not Irene. Whoops. <laughs> this is where Iris notes that idea, this is the... Let's see, what does it say today? Ah, the Boscombe Valley Mystery. Ooh, how intriguing! It must be the title of Iris' latest work. Oh my! I wonder what fantastic tale awaits us. Susan looks like an angel, but I bet she's dreaming of the most unsavory crime you could imagine. What? Oh, for the case. Okay. Do I have to examine all? You know what? I'm done. Uh, we're just gonna talk to Iris now. Wakahai. Doesn't Wakahai mean like me? Because Morgana says that all the time. He's like, Waka Haiwa. Mr. Matsuma's cat seems to have settled into his new home then. Oh, yes. And I've become very attached to little Waki. I should give her, like, a cuter, younger voice. I make her sound like an old woman. Hmm. It would appear his previous owner has completely forgotten him. Forgotten to him. Cats are unfeeling creatures. The mews are empty as the hearts of the muses. Mr. Natsume had no intention of taking Waki back to Japan, I wonder why he kept him in the first place. I expect he would have taken him if he could. But pets are strictly forbidden aboard steamships in our experience. And for good reason, terrible things can happen to the rules of passage if the rules of passage are not obeyed. Well, I don't mind, because Waki is adorable. Oh, cutie! Yes, he really is. Oh, yes. What about the door? I don't remember seeing that tiny thing in the main door before. Where did that come from? Oh, you noticed. You're observant, Rino. Look, I use this. It's my latest invention. What is... What is that? <laughs> I call it the Cat Flopper Mat. Gosh, 
A machine for baking doors just for cats? That's right. You can make a cat flap for a little fairy fan like Waggy in seconds. And it can do it in any door at all, no matter what's it, what it's made of. It's very powerful, you see? Wouldn't it be... Wait, wouldn't it have been quicker just to make the cat flap rather than making a machine to make the cat flap? Well, yes, maybe. But now I can make cat flaps anywhere I like. Oh, I think it's wonderful. You must make one for us in the door of our office upstairs, Iris. She really knows how to come up with unconventional invention, this girl. Hee hee hee. Okay. Uh, I don't see shoals anywhere. So maybe we just talk now? Uh, oh yeah, converse and then <laughs> wanting to die. You seem to be very unhappy this morning, Mr. Sholmes. What happens? It used to be the case, but in my hands... This violin sung like the dawn chorus. Its melisonant, melisonant toads would make flowers bloom. I did get a new bow this weekend. Oh, nice! I actually haven't played my viola since I got the my strings cleaned up. But I really should. I need to get back to like the level I was at. It's, uh, but it's so tiring just holding it like my viola up for even like two minutes. It's so tiring. My arm gets so sore. Uh, yeah. It would. But now the muses are unamused with me. The goddesses of music have thrown me over. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Sholmes? For hours I have bowed, for days even, through the night I have endeavored to no avail. That sound, my tone, is lost. That brilliant, clear, unwavering tone, gone forever! No more recitals of unbridled emotion! Well, you haven't been practicing much lately, have you, Hurley? Don't worry, I'm sure it will come back to you in time. And if you're at this, yeah. Man, I remember when I, like, when I was in high school, practicing viola for like 45 minutes to an hour every day. Oh yeah, definitely shoulder rest. I don't know how people play without one. It's just like, you have to go like this or you just have to hold it up with your hand just by itself. It's tough work. Heed my words, Mr. Nodhudu. The goddesses of the arts are fickle. One day they, best they bestow genius on a man, the next they unmercifully withdraw it. Hey, it's like art block or writer's block. Oh dear. <sighs> Why is this happening to me? If they take the turn I have for the violin from me, what is left for pity's sake? What is left? <laughs> Um, deduction, perhaps? Isn't that what you're known for? How could this happen to me? I made my mistakes! <laughs> something, something, something! Mr. Sholmes, I don't like to pry, but... Your desk looks rather empty today. Ah, oh, well done, Mr. Sato. Your observational skills do you credit. Oh, no, Mr. Sholmes. They pale into insignificance when compared to yours. You'd struggle not to notice, wouldn't you? You may hear this great iron electroscope. That's at Windbanks now. Windbanks? Sorry, it's at Windy Bank? No, Windbanks, the pawnbrokery. Pawn? What? You mean you've pawned that enormous machine of yours? It has some considerable value, you see. Quite undeservedly. But isn't it a very important machine for your work? I do wish you had consulted us if, if your situation had become so desperate. I should have gladly passed what little income I have to you. 
Iris, we have to survive. I mean, Suzato, <laughs> we have to survive. Dear madam, things are far from desperate. But, but the pawnbroker has your wonderful machine. How can it be anything but desperate? Making use of a pawnbroker is quite ordinary here in London, I assure you. Is it? It doesn't sound ordinary at all. It would seem that neither of you fully understand how pawnbroking works. Oh, what's to understand exactly? You know, we would like to see a special stream you play one song. Oh, once I brush up on my viola skills again, I will. I might do like, hey, here's me playing the viola. Burm. But yeah, I, oof, I'm so out of practice. Yeah, because the last time I seriously played was in high school when I was in 12th grade and I graduated 2005. It is 2021 now. It's been 16. Oh, it's been 16 years. Oh my gosh. Um, what did you mean when you said we didn't fully understand how pawnbroking works? To the people of London, pawnbrokeries are akin to banks. So you're like 21. <laughs> Thanks, Smooth. Thanks for the kind words. <laughs> yes, in my heart, I'm 21. No, in my heart, I'm like 26, 27. Banks? On Mondays, merchants relinquish their finest jackets and trappings to the pawnbroker of choice. With the money they receive in return, they are able to trade happily through the week. And then on Saturdays, they go to recover their things using the money they've earned. I had no idea! This has been a fascinating lesson for us! Everyone does it, you see, especially people in the inner London. And should they have money to spare, they would purchase another fine jacket. Not to wear, obviously, but to pawn, should the need arise. Oh, how ingenious. So whenever we have something that's getting in the way, we leave it at window banks, you see? A pawn brokery can be thought of as an extremely secure vault. Who would have thought that even pawnbrokers are different here in Great Britain? Of course, you have to watch Hurley with it. Sometimes he pawns things he really shouldn't. Don't you, Hurley? Don't you, Hurley? What does it matter? The world is dead to me now. So did you... What? What was that? Wagahai? What is happening? Maybe it's up. Also, hey, Sal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday. What was that? Oh, no. Wagahai's tackled up in your fire. Oh, <gasps> no. I think he thinks it's a toy. No. What's he doing to it? Oh dear, Mr. Shaw's precious violin! Why should I care? What? I shouldn't be surprised. If the cat is a more accomplished musician than I now. <laughs> He's destroying your violin. He's not playing it. Mr. Shaw really is in poor spirits, isn't he? Well, anyway, I'll put it back where it lives, shall I, Hurley? Out of the cat's reach, if possible. Maybe we should assess the damage. Mm. Are we done conversing? Okay, we're done conversing, so... Do I examine again? Uh, violin. So this is the violin, is it? The sounds of breaking things can be pleasing, too. Oh, man. Like, if you're ever stressed, then throwing rotten apples against a wall um, is actually very calming. 
Don't throw plates though, because you know the pieces might shatter and you might get hurt. But rotten apples, very good. I like the sounds of broken bones. <laughs> I've never heard a broken bone. I've never broken a bone either. The worst injury I've ever had. I sprained my toe. Yeah. That was a strange distraction. It is. I'm wondering if it comes into play later. The cab would be my next drinks. <laughs> oh my gosh! That's dark! That's a Stradivarius, one of the finest violins in the world, made by the renowned Italian luthier, Antonio Stradivari. Bone? No. Oh, I see. It doesn't really look like anything special to me. He has a Stradivarius and he didn't mind that a cat just tangled itself up in it like that. You're crazy, man. I happened upon a covered in dust, languishing in a pawn shop down, down a nondescript back alley. I'm sorry to cat lover. The broker had no idea of its value, so I was able to purchase it for a mere 55 shillings. Mm. It's kind of like when you crack your knuckles but louder and with more of a deeper tone. Ew. Random fact, I've been able to crack my toes very well this whole week. It's kind of scary, because usually after a while, there's like one one time I can't really crack it, so I just keep like curling my toes in over and over, and then I get a cramp because I keep curling my toes in. But it hasn't happened yet. And they're all like satisfying cracks too. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> Sorry for that gross info. Some people don't like bone cracking. How honorable of you. And until today, it has been my faithful companion in every great Paganini-inspired performance I have made. I ask you, is there a reason to live in a world devoid of music? To tolerate this blanched existence? No. There is none. Bone cracking ASMR. <laughs> Thought you were gonna say some people don't like feet. I, I mean, Everyone should appreciate their feet, because imagine if you didn't have it, you can't walk, and that sucks. I'm waiting for someone to say something gross about toes. You know, some people would say toes are gross, but as long as you clean between them well, I mean, they're not that bad. As long as you wash your feet, like, every day, and dry it well, right? Then it wouldn't be gross? Is it just me? <laughs> Um, Mr. Scholes? <laughs> what, dear madam, what? My thoughts are preoccupied with fancies of release from this dull routine. Well, it's about the violin. It looks very different to normal, don't you think? Hmm? What do you mean, Mr. Soto? Oh, Susie's right! Yes, the tone of the wood is completely different. Yeah, because it's cracked and a string stacked. JT has a foot fetish cover. I don't have a foot fetish, but it like, I mean, okay. If you've been walking around all day and you've had a sock on, or even if you didn't have socks on, you just like wore sandals and then you get all like the grime and the dirt from either the socks or from the outside world on your feet. And that's gross. But if you, if you clean your feet well after and dry it off, like then, then it's just normal. And if you stay in your house, and if your house is clean, the floors are clean, then it's not really that dirty, right? It, am I weird? <laughs> if I can't walk, then I don't have to go anywhere, and I can stay in bed all day, and no one can judge me. Time to cut off my feet. No, Sal, no! Because, like, then you can't really move anywhere on your own, and that'll suck. Because then you'll always need some kind of assistance, either from crutches or wheelchairs or another person, and it's just... It would suck. Depend on what we're talking about. Uh, feet apart from our body and the most used. That's true. We do use our feet a lot. She doesn't have a foot fetish, but if a cute girl showed her toes off to JT, she would sweat a little. <laughs> but think about how many feet people's feet you don't see because it's always covered by shoes. So yeah, I can skip leg day and feel no guilt. No, leg day is important, Sal. But yeah, um, sorry, to stay on the feet topic, I didn't know my toe shape was not normal 
because I never looked really looked at other people's feet before. Because apparently it's more common if like that your toes are lined like this, so like the big toes, the like the longest, and then it keeps going down. But mine are like this, where it's big toe, and then the second toe is the longest, and then it goes down. So like um, yeah. I started to uh, see that people's toe shapes were really different like when I got older and I was like wait I thought ev why is everyone's feet so like weird and it's like no I have the weird toes I have the recessive toe genes jelly abnormal toes wait I just got it gel toes mm -hmm. there's a reason why toes is part of my nickname because <laughs> I have weird ones and that's not all. I'm sure there was no crack here before. JT been looking at a lot of feet recently. No, I was just thinking about feet. Cause I was like, I was just like lying down on my um, yoga mat after working out. Cause my toes were like kind of jank cause I um, stretched them weird. And I was like, huh, feet, toes, hmm. Wait, it's not even the right size, is it? What's this? Did someone swap his thread of Arius? Did someone steal from us? I'm terribly sorry to have to tell you this, Mr. Sholmes, but... That instrument isn't a violin at all. Then... what? I believe... It's an entirely different instrument called a viola. You would be able to tell by the strings! Feet, toes, mmm... <laughs> what? Oh, Mr. Sholmes, are you all right? You're right. You are quite right. This isn't my faithful Stradivarius. So what, pray, is this piece of stringed flotsam? Don't dis viola, sir. Bro, not gonna lie, I would suck on a goth girl's toes while she degrades me, don't she? <laughs> oh, but, but degrade? No. Mm, I mean, if both of you are into it and you reach, like, you have a consensus and you're like, okay, this level is okay, don't say out anything outside of this, then go for it. Not your faithful performing partner, then. Oh, I see what must have happened. You do, Iris? This is just a simple mix-up. It sounds like Iris might be able to tell us exactly what's happened if we ask her. Also, we are spending so much time on this violin talk. Oh. Do I talk to her or... Yeah, okay. Jelly gives the consent talk. If you are both adults, adults, you know, no one underage, and you talk about what's comfortable for each of you and you set good boundaries and you understand each other's boundaries and you give consent, whatever you do, as long as it's not illegal, go for it. Cause it's your life. Man, I don't know what goes on behind closed doors of your life. I don't care, it's your life. Just be safe, don't do anything illegal. And yeah. This is just the entirety of case five, feet and missing violence. <laughs> Is arson illegal? Yes, Alk. <laughs> Don't do arson. Mix up. What did you mean by a mix of virus? Well, you see, this violin. Sorry, this viola, I mean. Was at Windbanks until last week. At, at the pawnbrokers? Not Mr. Scholl's beloved musical partner. There is a proverb from the East with which you are no doubt familiar, my dear fellows. Always let a beloved child travel. Huh? Yes, indeed. So you sent your beloved violin to the pawnbrokers and hoped that it would experience personal growth? Oh, what a wonderful idea. You couldn't even tell! First of all, violins and violas, if you're a, a full-grown adult, are very different in size. Violas are bigger because they have lower strings, so you need that more full-bodied sound. Also, the strings are different. Violins are um, G, D, A, E, and violas are C, G, D, A. Like, how do you not realize that? Ugh. Has 
Anybody ever heard of closing the door? No? Hmm? I don't think so. Shalom's confer uh, confirmed poser. Yes, he is. DDR? I tried to play DDR recently. I was so out of shape. It was so bad. Last week, I pawned my great anal analytoscope in order to release my precious instruments. But it would appear Mr. Windback mistakenly furnished me with this lordry fiddle instead. Tawdry fiddle instead. My ears cannot be deceived by the hollow timber of this piece of timber. No, but your every sense was deceived by the fact that it just had strings. Pshaw, a fine state of affairs this is, and why I always say, Mr. Nanakono. Never trust a pawnbroker, they will try to fiddle you every time. But earlier you told us that you could think of a pawnbroker as an extremely secure vault. It is much better to face these kinds of things with a sense of poison. <laughs> with a sense of poise and rationality. I chime in. Well, Sholmes did think snake drink uh, milk and have legs. Yeah, true. Sholmes is silly. Come, Mr. Nanahodo. Dilly Dally will get you nowhere. Sorry? Crunching your toast with that vacant aspect. Fressing your coffee so obtusely. Are you not a little embarrassed by your own conduct, considering the urgency with which we are faced? You must visit Mr. Windbank's robbery at once. That's right, isn't it, Mr. Shops? Precisely, Mr. Sutton. Without a moment's delay. But... but I haven't finished my bacon and eggs. My dear fellow, surely you do not still intend. To crunch your bacon with an increasingly vacant aspect. To fresh your eggs with ever more atusely. All right, all right, say no more. Let's go then. Don't worry, Runa. I'd be happy to heat it up for you again later. Oh, thank you, Iris. As it happens, I'm rather curious to see what a British pawnbroker looks like. Not nah, fam, it's poison like you take a drink then think about it. <laughs> You're a silly silk. Um, why, what? Should I go to Baker Street or the pawnbrokery? I'll go to Baker Street first. No more violent talk, please. There will be all the violent talk. Closed. Pawnbrokers. Who wants to make a band? <laughs> Look at all the different things in the window of the shop. I could play keyboard if we make a band. Ah, oh, that's Windbanks, the pawnbrokery. It looks much smarter than a pawnbroker's in Japan, doesn't it? Yes, you're right. I find pawn shops at home rather inapproachable, personally. It reminds me of tearfully parting with my favorite fountain pen. I felt so miserable. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger, Mr. Nadhoro. I feel like if I examine, like, windows and different lamps, I'll get coins, just like Professor Layton. It's already been two months since we started taking lodgings here above Mr. Sholmes' office. I still can't quite believe it. I never expected things would turn out like this. Oh, I know! To actually be sharing accommodation with the world's greatest detective. If I ever find myself before a court of law now, I'll have not one regret. I don't know what you're talking about. But I'd be happy to defend you, of course. Anything else? Okay. Then we move. Oh, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, wind effects. April 15th. So this is a British prom burglary. Oh my! There are all sorts of tools and contraptions in here that I've never laid eyes on before. Ah, oh, Susatasan, so the sun. And that spark of wonder in your eyes. You can't wait to scare the shelves, can you? I get the impression you enjoy places like this. Oh yes, I don't know why, but seeing such a lot of things I don't understand is a real thrill for me. My dear fellows, let us not forget why we are here. Oh, Mr. Sholmes. We are calling on matters of business, not pleasure. And clearly Mr. Sholmes means business too, judging from the spark of fury in his eyes. 
Ah, Mystic Show, so welcome back. Did you hear that brazen welcome? Well, yes, we are potential customers after all. We have disgruntled those customers, Mr. Nanahudu, and it's time to inform Mr. Windbank of our ire. Come, the fight is afoot. But I want to examine stuff. Like the skull. What are you doing, my dear fellows? We are not here to browse for interesting curios. We have come to teach this broker a lesson. Oh, but there are just so many fascinating items. It looks as though we'll have to talk to Mr. Windbeck first before you can explore in here, Mr. Sato. Okay, fine. We shall converse. Violin. Naturally, you recall this, which I retrieved from you some days ago. Yes. <laughs> the second-rate fiddle is not my faithful instrument, Mr. Windbank. The color of the wood is different. It has holes in it. It's not even the same size. A wonderful summary of our observations, Mr. Sholmes. Oh, I'm so very sorry, sir. How utterly unforgivable of me! An inexcusable mistake for a pawnbroker! There's only one way to make amends. Why is everyone so freaking dramatic and trying to off themselves? I shall have to take my own life. I don't think that will be necessary, do you? If I may just say one thing before I drop off. Uh, yes? It was you, sir, Mr. Sholmes, who took it upon himself to remove the item the other day, I believe. Sorry? As I recall, I entered the storeroom to fetch a violin when I heard, ah, oh, here it is. You did? And when I turned to controvert you, you had taken the violin and left, sir. However, there can be no doubt that the blame lies firmly at my own door for allowing you to leave. So I shall grumble, I shall not grumble or grass any longer. May the skills die with me. What the f no, 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 stop, my dear fellow. The fault is mine. Phew. It would appear that the fight is over. I do humbly apologize, Mr. Windbank. Evidently, my questionable disposition precipitated this tragedy. Why does he use so many big words? Well, you would have been Mr. Herlock Shows without that questionable disposition now, would you? Ha <laughs> I do believe you may be right, sir. <laughs> it's either a laugh or a cry, I suppose. You are, it must be said, one of my most challenging customers. I didn't remind you of the peculiar collection of items you brought through my door over the past. Were guns that easy to come by in England? I mean, let's be real, guns are easy to come by... Well, actually, in England, I don't know. Because I know for sure, at least in a city near me, there are at least four gun stores on the same streets. It's crazy. Oh, peculiar items? In the extreme, ma'am. For example. The unpublished manuscript of an eponymous work, the novels of Herlock Sholmes, or some such. Oh my! A new fully fledged novel? And unpublished? A story I've yet to read, you mean? Ah! Forgive me! Wait, before you die, you must tell me more! Then did he pawn off something of Iris's? I must know more, tell me everything! Wow, Susatosan is really fired up now. Is there really an un unpublished story under this very roof? 
Well, one day the gentleman here brought in an old metal chest, you see. I should like to entrust this to your care for a while, Mr. Winterbreak. Ha! For a chest like that, one shilling, sir, not in the farthing bar. It helps us in a great failure of need. The latest manuscript recounted the adventures of old Mr. Herlock Jones. I beg your pardon, your manuscript. Do you wish to deposit your manuscript? Indeed I do, for I'm confident you'll be quite safe here. We've come a long way from the cop who likes to choke himself. The cop who likes to choke himself. I don't remember that cop. I remember the Japanese detective dude we came here with who, um, who liked to, like, kind of get beaten up. But I don't remember who's, who likes to choke himself. And that was that. Ah, such was the show's latest tale of otherworldly mystery lies dormant in my storeroom. Mr. Sholmes, is that really true? How many lifts does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Do I sense that someone doesn't want to talk about this? Okay, so what is the whole case supposed to be? Right now it just seems like all this filler conversation. I can you pay, pay your fee, do I not? Then kindly continue to store my belongings, securely. Not in this game. Then... There was a cop in Phoenix, right? There was Gumshoe, Edgeworth, Butts, Phoenix, Mia, Maya, Pearl... Wow, who's the cop? I can't think of him. Or her. Of course, sir, of course. They're safe and sound with me, I assure you. All my life. This is all very strange. I think his name was Mr. Me Seeks. That's that's Rick and Morty, Regal. Oh my goodness. I wonder, could I ask you something? Oh, a gentleman from the East, I see. Yes, that sable suit. I suppose I could offer you six pets for it. Without wishing to offend, the tone is somewhat dull. Sorry? Aha! But for your splendid attire, ma'am, five guineas no less. The colors are exquisite, the design exotic, Eastern artistry at its finest, may I say. Oh my, five guineas, you say? How interesting. Why do I feel as though I've suffered some sort of de defeat here? Actually, I was hoping to ask you about your business. I've heard it said that a pawnbroker's, uh, pawnbrokeries are used rather like banks here in London. Yes, so indeed. Many of my customers utilize the establishment I use to describe. I appraise their items and offer them a proportionate loan and two months of secure stowage. If in that time they repay the original sum to me plus the agreed interest, their items are happily returned. But what happens if they don't pay you the money? What does it have to do with the Hound of the Baskervilles? <laughs> and the items are offered for sale in my shop, as you can see on the shelves behind me. It was Meekins. Oh yes, Meekins! I remember him, he had the bandaged hand. And he was just like, oh I'm sorry! And he would like choke it. Yeah, you're right. Totally forgot about him. So you never sell items before the two months has passed then? That's right, ma'am, that's right. Which made some considerable responsibility rest on my shoulders. Should a customer's precious belongings be lost, the only recompense is for me to end it all. The very idea, Mr. Windbank, is an absurdity. One should never talk of one's demise so casually. Says the man who was telling us all it was a good day to die only this morning. So let's not forget that I have already helped you take measures to ensure such a tragedy never occurs. Oh, what sort of measures? I engineered a simple device which Mr. Windbank has installed here in his shop. I call it the Red-Handed Recorder. Is that not so, Mr. Windbank? <sighs> what was that deep sigh about? 
What does all of this have to do with <laughs> a hound? What on earth is a red-handed recorder? Use your eyes, my dear fellow. There are two just below the ceiling. I can see what happens to uh, what appears to be a camera attached to some sort of timed device. Timing device. Yeah, very astute. It is indeed a camera furnished with some hundred pieces of celluloid film. And every 30 minutes, precisely, the camera automatically records the appearance of the shop. Here, I have an example I can show you. 4 a.m., whoa. Ah, oh, yes, print from the camera set to record the activity at the shop counter. I developed a special type of film so sensitive it produces a cr crystal clear image even in darkness. Really? That's extraordinary. Yes, you can clearly see the counter and the door behind it. Look! So you see, were someone to enter the premises with ill intent, his identity would be summarily exposed. Only within the 30 minutes, though. But did you not say that the photographic prints were taken at 30 minute intervals? Indeed, as you say, my dear madam. Any opinions on PlayStation thing today? What PlayStation thing? There's a PlayStation thing? Then what if the incident were to occur in between times? One could only say... That would be a cruel twist of fate. <laughs> I must confess your devices have given, been giving me some calls for distress of light. PlayStation Showcase? Okay, hold up. I... Sorry, PlayStation so. Showcase. Um. Okay. Uh. Blog. PlayStation. No! Tell me what happened! Summarize it. Polygon. There we go. Biggest announcements. Um. Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, okay. I heard Knights of the Old Republic was good. Um. Wolverine? Huh. But is it like old Wolverine or hmm. Spider-Man 2 with Venom? Okay. I mean, I heard Spider-Man was good. God of War Ragnarok winds up Kratos' time in Norseland's. Wait, what? Uh, rule of Thor, we get right hearts. So you don't even for Ragnarok like Joker. Wait, so is it like? Huh? Is it- am, am I confused? Wasn't God of War Ragnarok already released, so are they just- are they just doing a remake, like remastering it to- to um- to make it prettier? Or is this continuing his story after the end of the, that game, and now you get to explore the rest of the realms of Midgard? Ragnarok is more solid. Yeah, I know. So in the um, don't think she would react to the video of the stream. No, that would be its own separate um video. Uh, I just want to see the highlights. But I okay. So in the God of War game that came out, you got to go to three realms if I'm correct, right? You were in um Asgard, Midgard, and Niflheim, right? But there's nine realms in all. Uh, yeah. The boy game is before Ragnarok. Okay, so this is a continuation then. Okay. That that makes sense then. And hopefully you do get to go to all the other realms. Because they like kind of tease you because they're like, Oh yeah, hey, like go to this console and you can travel to all the different realms. But you only travel to two other ones before the game ends. And if you try to go to the other areas, they're just like, Whoop, you can't go there. So I was just like... That's stupid. But if they're like finally continuing it, I guess that's cool, but you should have just all put it in one game then. Like, the PS4 can handle it. And everyone's always like, oh, the graphics take up too much space. Like, there's not enough space to put all the data for the story and blah, blah, blah. Because there's a lot of files, you know, voice files and blah, 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 whatever. If you try, you can do it. If you like, yeah, if you prioritize good story, good gameplay, 
over all the bells and whistles of how pretty and shiny the graphics are. Like, just give me a, a solid good game instead of like really pretty game that I don't want to go back to because I feel like there's no replay value because the story sucks. Like, I'd rather have a good story. Anyways, moving on. GTA 5 and GTA Online. Okay, well, I, I'm not really into Grand Theft Auto, so I'm in. Uncharted Remasters. Okay, that's cool. Gran Turismo 7. Okay, cool. Project Eve. Parasite Eve? Uh, oh. South Korean, okay. Hack and Slash Adventure got a new, rather moist sounding trailer. Uh, okay, so this doesn't look like Parasite Eve because that girl does not look like Aya Brea. Okay, so, no. Um, I thought the first game was pretty meaty. I mean, yeah, there's a lot, and like, it was good, but then if they're going to show that you have the potential to travel to all the other realms, um, but they don't let you go, then it's like, why did you show this to us then? Like, you should have at least have some, like, side quests or, like, keep the story going throughout the other realms, too. Like, I, I don't... I just... Like, give me all the realms at once, please. It's a teaser? Oh, okay. But it's not Parasite Eve. Uh, Chia takes you to Tropical Paradise. Uh, open world adventure. Can walk into various animals, explore tropical surroundings. Okay. Is that it? Uh, the biggest announcements. Oh wait, that's what I read. Oh, okay, so the only really new thing is Chia, Project Eve, God of War Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, Wolverine. Okay. Mm. Not bad, I guess. The other realms are a teaser. Yeah, it's just... <sighs> uh, depending on how well Rag like they continue up the story on in Ragnarok, because um, I don't want to say spoilers just in case people haven't played God of War or seen videos about it, but like, how are they going to pick up this like the story now? Like the really the relationship between Kratos and Atreus now that they know who. Atreus really is like how will their relationship develop um, because he managed to finally um, do the thing that they set out to do right dealing with the mom so now it's like where else are they gonna go what else do they have left to do I mean I love Norse mythology so anything dealing with Norse mythology I'm just like heck yeah that's why I bought Hellblade so I know a sacrifice because it looks kind of like Norse mythology ish but Still haven't played it. Uh. That's why I played Valkyrie Profile. Valkyrie Profile! Totally forgot about those games. I really want a third game to come out, but I'm highly doubtful that they'll ever continue the series again. Uh, so now, uh, Forspoken is a new IP. Oh! What? I didn't see that on the highlights list. Hmm. Interesting. I want to play Uncharted. Uncharted, I feel like, was a fun game. Like, I didn't play it because it made me dizzy, but I watched my brother play it. And it seems like a really solid, good series. It was all very interesting. I think the gameplay was kind of clunky in some areas, but, you know, as the series goes on, it gets better. And I feel like, yeah, it's a good predecessor to Last of Us. Gameplay-wise, story-wise, like, world-wise. It's fun. You should play it if you haven't. Okay, sorry for that long interlude, but uh, back to back to Herlock Sholmes. I beg your pardon, Mr. Windback. Surely there are anything but distressing. Reassuring is the word. It's the cost of the film, sir. You most graciously placed not one but two cameras in my shop, after all. Which means I must pay for an eye on 100 utterly useless prints every single day. I'm afraid the cost of the film will break me before I'm very much older. 
Tokyo Ghostwire. What? Okay, what? I need to play PlayStation Showcase. Why did they not have? I want to see what everything today. Okay, Kotaku. That's the Old Republic, Wolverine. Oh, wow, that does not look great, but maybe the screenshot's just bad. Oh, Spider-Man, God of War, Wonderlands. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, interesting. Oh, Borderlands spinoff, okay. Project D, Uncharted, Rainbow Six Extraction? What is Rainbow Six? Forspoken, ooh. Square Enix game, okay. Um, limited PS5 exclusive. I will have to look up the thing. Alan Wake. Okay, that game sounds so familiar. Grand Theft Auto, Ghostwire. Ghostwire! The, the game that looks scary. I don't think I can play it because it looks scary. Uh, Death Loop. Okay. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Kid Amnesia. Hmm. Interesting. Chia. Uh, Gran Turismo Blood Hunts. Horror Battle Royale. No, oh, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, stop to stream and play, uh, PS Expo. <laughs> no, I, I think I'm done. Um... I'm interested in watching other people play Ghostwire. I don't think I'd be able to play it myself. Um... I do want to take a look at Forspoken. But I don't know how the audio will come out if I start playing this, um, uh, on stream. I don't... I don't have the proper setup to like be like, hey, let's pop this on the screen for a bit. Uh, but I'll definitely check out Forsp Forspoken. Uh, okay. So, okay. Back to the Forspoken looks cool. <sighs> that's the thing. That's the thing with um Square Enix. Like it, everything looks beautiful. Watch it on your phone. Okay. You know what? Okay. Here we go. Um, I'm going to mute video capture device. Oh! Okay. I'm gonna play Forspoken. I'm going to raise my volume. Probably doing it on a secret, but I'm a pretty big deal. Big deal. We are getting out of the city, Elmer. I promise. Oh, I'm cat. I love cats. No more fights. Bigger. I'm getting like Life is Strange vibes. Pretty though. Holland Tunnel. Okay, so she's from either New York or New Jersey. Hey, Square Enix, take all these graphics and make a Chrono Trigger remake. How about that? Masuka. Who's there? I tell you not this. Well, no, you would pull this anyway. I swear to God, asshole, show yourself. Show myself, I'm showing you. Where are you? Right here, at the end of your arm. Yes. Okay, so let me get we got Chrono Cross. No, I want a Chrono Trigger remake. I'm seeing freaking dragons and oh, remaster. Oh, that's too far. Good to know that was a lie. <laughs> no, that sucks. You are the only hope we have. 
saw the trailer I'm just like hey, it's okay uh, I mean probably because they didn't really clearly show what the battle system would be like so I'm just like eh. also don't really know what the story is but it looks pretty I mean like I guess when it gets closer to release date um, and they show more trailers and whatnot, I'll be like, oh, let me see if this is something I'd be into. But for now, it's just like, it's okay. I don't know. Like, the only new game I'm really looking forward to getting is Tales of Arise because I already know the Tales of series is like good and solid and it's something I'm looking forward to. So, hmm. But that's still probably good for me because I have a huge backlog. What was the name of the video you were watching? A uh, Forspoken trailer. Uh, Forspoken. There we go. Uh, nevertheless, a small price to pay to ensure the safety of my preferred pawn broker right now. I'm just hoping for more games that are PX5 exclusive so I can get more value. Exactly. My dear fellows, we verge on an age where safety and security come at a price. I didn't unmute this! Ah! <laughs> Whoopsies. Oh, heaven help us. Were you guys able to hear the trailer when I was watching it? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Hey dear, how you doing? Thanks for joining! I was I was um saying earlier that I probably won't get a rise until I get a new PS5, which probably won't be for years. So by then, you cancel the rise? Why? I was gonna say, like, you can play through it all, and then when I'm playing through it, you could give me like hints and stuff when I'm stuck or when I'm sucking. But you canceled it. Why? You need to C6 Raiden first? What's that? Now then, Mr. Sholmes, allow me to return your precious violin. Oh, Genshin. Man, as soon as I heard that Miyuki Sawashiro was was the, the voice for a character, I was like, damn it, I really want to get back into Genshin. But it just makes me so dizzy. I can't, I really can't play it for a long time. It makes me so sad. But Miyuki Sawashiro, oh. <laughs> uh, the very thing. Thank you, Mr. Windebank. Perhaps this might mark the end of peculiar items you tried to pop, hmm? Because if anything were to happen to one of them, this would be the only answer! It's so much better on PS5 and PC. I see playing it on PC, it made me so dizzy. So that's why I installed it onto my phone. But on my phone, it's so tiny and my phone gets so hot. So I'm just like, eh, can I really play this? But, hmm, maybe when I finally get a PS5, I'll try it for PS5. And wait, does the cross save work between um, PS5 and PC and phone? Cause I know it cross the cross saves move between PC and phone. It's not like I have anyone special anyway. Who did I get? Barbara? Noel, everyone got. Um, official. I mean, no frack. 
So I totally have to start over? Frack. Really think you ought to stop waving that gun around? Someone could get hurt. Fair not. Sorry? I've only loaded a single bullet, so no one but myself could possibly be harmed. That's not really what I meant. Doesn't have cross save from PlayStation to PC Mobile. Boo. Then I'll try it again on PC. Mm. Good day to you then, Mr. Windbank. It's been a pleasure as always, Mr. Jones. This pawnbroker is going to come to play later in the case. So, Mr. Nandohoro. Now we can explore at last. I'm too afraid to play Genshin. Must protect my wallet from my gambling addiction. Um, actually, surprisingly, I wasn't that tempted to spend real money on Genshin. I mean, it is tempting to, like, spend all your money on the gems to summon characters during, during the summoning event, but... But I wasn't like, oh, no, I need this character. It's just... Yeah, not bad. You have a rise while you stream? I don't have a rise. I probably won't get it for a couple of years. Until I get my own PS5 that is either a pro or a slim version. Nerdy Toast, Puffy Toast, Pretty Toast. Hey Kirby, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Thursday! Pinky Toast headphones. Also, hi, I have a cat. Dude, we saw we saw um Wakahai, the Soseki-san's cat that got left with us. He's cute. I don't mind spo spoiler if it's you playing. <laughs> because I go so slow. <laughs> there seems to be a little door hidden behind that curtain there. That leads to the storage room, where Mr. Windbank keeps articles that are currently in pawn. Ah, I see. There's nothing of particular interest inside. I certainly wouldn't recommend any less in this activity. Recommended or not, it's not something I tend to do. There is but one key, and Mr. Windbank keeps it in his pocket at all times. Before he sleeps, he places it into a small pot which he slides under his pillow. How, how on earth do you know about that, Mr. Sholmes? I'm a detective, sir. It is my business to know what others do not. <laughs> I'm frequently assailed by information that I neither care for nor wish to retain. Mr. Sholmes, you are a wonder. And the prime suspect of this palm broker is ever burled. <laughs> When does a rise come out? Look at that enormous ledger open on the counter there. Mr. Windbank is, if nothing else, very particular about recording the items he accepts. He'd have to be, otherwise he'd get himself into all sorts of trouble. Which might explain the thing that catches my eye far more than the ledger. The revolver here. It will also help me, uh, what to expect to make platinum faster. Isn't it out? Is it? What? Uh... Oh! <gasps> today's the, today's the ninth? It comes out tomorrow. I see most people have it. Uh, release date is September 10th. Man, I wish I could buy it right now to, um, to, like, up the sales numbers to be like, yes, people still want Tales games, please make them. But I don't have a PS5. And I'm wondering by the time I get a PS5, they might have, like, a, oh, like, collector's edition, like, special upgraded stuff with more bonus stuff. So I don't want to buy it right now. No! Uh, North Metal people have it because physical copy. Mm -hmm. Man, man. I want it, but I want it for PS5. So I will wait. I'm gonna wait to get it. Do not entertain a single thought of pilfering an article herein, my dear fellow. Hmm? I assure you, Mr. Wunderbank would not hesitate to draw that weapon with the speed belying his portly size. Oh, you... you don't mean he'd... Blow his brains out. Indeed, in recompense for his blunder. Oh my. But in any case, of course we would never do such a thing. How could you even suggest it? 
Du, du, du. Shovels! No, I don't want this again. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted the shovels. Ah. I know if I get it right now, I won't be playing it. Same with Lost Judgment. Mm. I wish I could get into Genshin more. But instead of getting into Genshin, I should just keep focusing on Final Fantasy XIV since I paid for that. I'll wait after Raiden Banner goes away. <laughs> In two weeks. Makes me want to just jump on to like get enough gems to be able to um, summon, uh, to get a summon chance, but I probably won't get her. Look at this! What could this lovely big shiny box be? That, my dear madam, is a music box. Surely of such things in your own country. Oh my! Yes, but I've certainly never seen one so large before. What, what's Steam? What's Steam? Shall we listen a while? This is really pretty. Ah, what a sublime sound. It's like the music of angels. I've never heard anything like it before in my life. This particular specimen is of the larger variety, commonly found in public houses and restaurants. There is a metal disc inside of which the notes to be played are recorded. Simply by replacing the disc with another, any music you care to imagine can be played. My goodness! What a simply delightful machine! Indeed. Though the popularity has waned recently with the development of the gramophone, of course. Man, I have music boxes! Oh no, they're all... They're all packed up. I have near music boxes. Tales of Arise on Steam? Ah, uh, but I want it for a PS5. I'm a console girl. <sighs> Science and technology advance at such an overwhelming pace. What assortment of things are uh, there are on these shelves here? Cost check. Thank you. Crockery, footwear, clocks, and watches? Almost anything you care to imagine. Those are forfeit items offered for sale by the pawnbroker. What's that really mean, though? When you pawn, or colloquially pop, an item, the broker loans you money against its worth. He stores the item for an agreed period of time, after which the loan must be repaid, if not. He is free to display it in a shop for sale, at a price of his choosing. Oh yes, now you've explained it, I'm noticing little price tags on everything. Of course, simply by paying the agreed interest on the loan, one can extend the period of safekeeping. So you may pawn that black garb of yours without fear, my dear fellow. My treasured university uniform? Never, it embodies my student spirit. I might play a rice in English because I'm getting kind of lazy to read lately. <laughs> I will still play in Japanese because I'm a weeb! But by the time you get the console, you can get the special edition. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. There's going to be a special edition because it might be years. And then they'll have like extra bonus stuff. It's why I'm still not getting Final Fantasy VII Remake because I'm sure by the time I get around to like having a PS5 and playing all of it, Hopefully most of the episodes will have come out. Whoops. Like look what they're doing already. They added a Yuffie episode. And then next they're gonna be like, oh hey, buy the game with the Yuffie episode included so you don't have to buy like extra stuff. But then they might have like episode two and episode three. So yeah, that's why I'm not playing stuff in Remake right now. Even though it looks gorgeous. Now what do you suppose this rather enormous machine does? It seems to have two little windows for looking through. Allow me to enlighten you, my dear fellows. What you are looking at is a stereoscope. The English cast isn't too bad when I try out the demo. Maybe I should just try out the demo for- wait, can I play on my PS4? Yeah, maybe I'll try out the demo just to get a feel for the gameplay and the English cast. But also play it in Japanese! <laughs> a stereo- fascinating! It is aptly named, I assure you. 
Look through the eyepieces and see for yourself. Oh, I should be delighted to. Excuse me a moment while I just have a look. Just before you do, there is something I should point out. My dear fellows, in order to see the image properly, stereoscopically, as it were, you will need to be cross-eyed. However, if that is beyond you, it is of little consequence today. Alright then, I'm going to try it. Ah! Miss Naruto, you must see, at once! Oh, oh, alright then. So I need to be cross-eyed, like I'm trying to look at my own nose. Do I really get to look at it? Wait. I don't see it, I don't see it. Wait, what? Am I not supposed to see it? I don't believe it. It's just a photographic print, but it seems like you could reach out and touch it. I did not see it. I tried. Yes, the sense of the death is startling, is it not? Stereoscopes are one of London's many fads. They are often found in little stalls in the park. People queue for hours to see them. Why? Why are people battling for such black magic? It is no magic, my dear madam. It is, well... Far too complicated to explain at present. We shall save this lesson for another day. Oh. Another reason why I'm not getting Final Fantasy VII um, Remake right now is because um, I want to see if Vincent Valentine shows up in the next episode. Because they said that episode 1 ends right when you leave Midgard. And before you reach uh, Niffle Nibbleheim, you can like walk around towns and do other stuff. And maybe, I'm pretty sure Nibbleheim will be in the second episode. But you're supposed to be able to recruit um, Vincent early on enough if you're strong enough to beat the monster. But if they didn't include him and they make you recruit him later, then there's no point because Vincent is the best part about Final Fantasy VII, aside from Tifa. Mention Vincent and you'll activate Lusty Toes. Dude, but for real though, he's a beautiful, beautiful man. Oh my goodness. Objection? What? Vincent, Tifa, all you need from Final Fantasy VII. Fight me. So you're gonna start playing Fi Final Fantasy VII Remake when Vincent becomes available? <laughs> yeah, because I want to see him. Be yeah, because he's hot and hot. Uh, but ideally I'd like to wait for the whole game to be out so I could just play it all through in one sitting. You're sweating, Jelly, am I? <laughs> I always date Barrett. When I played Final Fantasy VII, I was like middle school, like early high school. So Barrett scared me because he was always yelling and shooting off his gun. And I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I didn't say it. He scared me. Sid scared me too because he was cussing all the time and I'm just like what's wrong with you dude so I didn't like Sid either hot and hot and hot and bruised and hot <laughs> wait so you haven't played it at all 7 remake nope have not played it I've heard the battle music though because I love it you're a meek little girl heck yeah and I still kind of am <laughs> Barrett is like the star of 7 remake that's good. He should get more um, screen time. He needs to get more recognition because I feel like in original seven, after you got introduced to him in the intro of the game, he like kind of drops off until you have another like, I don't know if it was side quest or like main story with him, with um, what's his face? What's his face? What's his name? His friend. But yeah, apart from that, like, Barrett gets nothing. So I'm just like, oh, that kind of sucks. Sit down and drink your red tea. Yeah, see, I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I was like, Sid, why are you so mean to your assistant? Damn, she, she got you tea. Like, why are you yelling at her? 
I hope you haven't heard anything specific about the story. No, I haven't. Dine. Yes. Him. Marlene's that yes. I feel like apart from those instances, like, you don't really see Barrett, which is kind of sad. But it kind of was good for me when I was younger, because I was like, oh, I don't have to hear him, like, yelling a lot. <laughs> but, oh my gosh, Advent Children, the dub? <laughs> Barrett leaving a message on a uh, cloud cell phone, like, what a foo, I am the man, oil cloud. <laughs> that was so funny. <sighs> Can't give away hints, just wow, really? Hmm. Cause I can't imagine that they changed the story that much. Cause they can't. Hmm. That's not a calendar you could easily miss, is it? 15th April, today's date. Yes, that's not for sale, I must point out. That much all. You need to play it, Jelly? I, I do want to play it. I just don't want to play an episode, wait for the next episode to come out and be like, what happened? What? I just want one complete super deluxe collector's edition package. It's a completely different game. How? I mean, I played the demo at like um, E3 and it was really, the combat was really fun. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot better than 15. It's an Eastern style a page a day calendar. Every night at midnight, I tear off the front page to reveal the following day's date. That's all I'm saying? Hmm. Hmm. What could be so different about it? The perfect calendar for a tearaway fellow such as yourself, Mr. Windbank. And who was it who walked out of here with the wrong violin before? Well, when the agreed storage period has passed without repayment, articles are forfeited, you see. So I have to keep a close eye on the date. It's not the goal for pawnbroker's assertion, you might say. Oh, yes. I can see you're very dedicated to your job. Really want to see Jelly's reaction? To what? To what? What? Okay, what happens in, in Midgard? Um, the, the Mako reactor? The church? The train graveyard? Seventh heaven? The other reactor? Shinra tower? And then you leave, right? Just play it, it's probably better if you played it staggered to prevent fatigue. <laughs> Okay, I'll wait till I get a PS5, and then I'll get it. Artsy, what? Now I wanna know! <laughs> Stop teasing me! Midgard was entire disc. Yeah, that's crazy, because, like, in the original PlayStation, disc one ended... ended way after that. Disc one ended after, okay, Midgard, Nibelheim, the, the forests, the forest was the last place, but I feel like there was somewhere else you go before the end of the disc one. So, like, how many episodes are they gonna release? It's crazy! Look at this! Whatever could this be used for? Um... I have no idea. Huh. There's a small catch just here. Look! We're going to open it, aren't we? Oh my, that's amazing! It has some sort of spring-loaded mechanism. Which we'll never manage to put back to the way it was before. Hmm? What are you two doing? What? Us? Nothing! N n nothing at all! Whatever this device is, it seems to have a pair of little windows to look through. I feel as though I've seen something rather similar to this elsewhere. Isn't it another stereoscope machine? What? Only tuppers for it? That ain't fair and you know it! The article's barely worth a penny, miss. I cannot offer more. Who's talking? Stop teasing me, that's what Jelly said, haha. <laughs> this one ended at Midgard exit, I thought. 
No. Disc one. Because disc two, disc three, I feel like was all the last bits of the game, all the final remaining, like, um, final limits, final weapons, side quests, the final dungeon, and final boss. Disc 2, I feel like, had all the, um, the, the world traveling, picking up Sid, uh, all that stuff, right? No? Jelly has no idea what she's in for, so you know how there's the original game, the compilations, and so on? The OG game had disc one and after Yeah, see? That's that's what I'm saying the disc one ended after after that. Uh I'm getting old, my memory fails me. Disc one ends at ancient shit. Yes. I could have finished Yuffie's story, but she's really fun to play as. Yuffie is the best. I don't know how they're going to give her a perk, because in original Final Fantasy VII, she could never be back attacked. Even though like um enemies come up behind you and then they have to hit you or your turn has to come before you can turn around. But she never could be back attacked. So I always had her in my party because at least one person would be able to like um, either take normal damage or like start attacking first. Like still have normal attack time. But how are they going to give her a buff in Remake? Because that was special about her. Uh, this two ended with Cloud getting yes. Back to the remake. You know how there's the original game and the sequels that came after? Yeah, like, um, 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 wow, I'm blanking. Not, um, Dirge of Cerberus, because that's a Vincent spinoff, but not Crisis Core, because that's a prequel. What was the, what was the sequel? There was like a Shinra game and some other stuff. Yeah, they matter a lot. Hmm. Sounds like there's an argument brewing over a better counter. Come on, they can't be right after you had to prep a butcher's on it. I've seen all I need to see, young girl. Oh no. I knew it. Wait, don't we know? I'm sure I recognize her. Oh, yes. It's the young lady from Mr. McGill's trial two months ago. Her name is Susan Estrada, Lord. She's a chancer. I don't request more crowds for leaving people not the persons. Why is commonly called a pickpocket? So if you're saying that those games matter a lot, will we will we go underneath Shinra Tower then? If you're so familiar with everything that happened, you're going to be like, <laughs> you know the last one. Huh? Then. Because Dirge of Cerberus happened after Advent Children. So he Vincent shouldn't be aware of all the colored people. That sounds terrible. All the name color name people. <laughs> like Rossi and um Blue and Vice and Black and what's her face? Well I bet you look Clip, no, Muckus, no, please don't clip that. I, that was said in error. Please don't clip it. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Slar. I hope you've been well. It, what? Well, you remember me then, do you? Well, I remember being completely surrounded by smoke, that's for sure. She never returned the gun, huh? So, what are you doing here? Down out like the rest of us? Nothing to eat? Come to pop that black weasel. Sorry, Kurt, Avia. What is it about this black uniform that makes everyone comment on it? There's so much that gets explored that wasn't supposed to be explored. Hmm? Like what? Ah, oh, good day, unless I'm mistaken. You would be the young pickpocket who stole our experimental smoke grenade launcher. Ah, oh, Mr. Sherms! So, you have something of value to pawn, do you? Allow me to see the article and I shall negotiate with Mr. Mundimank on your behalf. Pull the other one. I don't need no help from some stuff, D. Get out of my business. Go on, I'm in trouble for you. 
As you wish, Miss Lestrade. I will happily remove myself from your presence. I ain't saying you gotta play it. Mm, but I don't wanna play it until most of the game comes out. I don't wanna play Sam 7 Remake until either Vincent comes out or the entire collection comes out. It depends on if Vincent comes out in episode two. If he doesn't, then I could wait. He's really done it. He's gone. I'm sorry, but as I said, there really is no room for negotiation here. What is that thing he has in his hand? Some kind of metal disc? Thank you! Go on, leave me alone! Oh, Miss Lestrade, just pretend we aren't here. We shan't be offended in the slightest. susan san really can't stand her ground when she wants to. Whatever. Simp, I am! I'm a Vincent Simp! I proclaim it loudly. I don't care. He's a beautiful man. Sadly too obsessed with Lucrezia. But you know what? Overlooking that, he's gorgeous, okay? <laughs> Sit for his perfect toes. Nothing per- I just said he's gorgeous. You can't even like- He's always so fully clothed. The least clothed you see him is when he's wearing a suit as a Turk. Oh, but when he has his short hair too, he looks so good. He looks so handsome. Oh my gosh. Ugh. Oh, he's so beautiful. Oh, Vincent. <laughs> Somehow, I didn't really think you were the sort of person who'd use a palm broker, Miss Lestrade. He's naked transformed. But when he's transformed, he's like in monster form. So you can't really, it's not really him. It's monster him. So it doesn't count. But Jelly's saying, I want to see him in swimsuits. I do. I do. In Crisis Core, you got to walk around as Zack in swim trunks. Why couldn't Vincent do that in Dirge of Cerberus? Excuse me. <laughs> I'm not gonna bother the rest of parts until all the press release after seeing the end of part one. <laughs> what if Vincent gets a race for me, make? Don't you dare, RC. He must come out in the remake. Are you... Do you know how many people are waiting for him to appear? Because he's so freaking beautiful and gorgeous? You know who's cuter than him? Who? Who? I mean, out of all of my um, video game anime boys, Vincent is number one gorgeous man. No matter how much I love Yuri or Eric or Yuji or who else? Who else? No one's really popping into mine. Akihiko. Like, I love Akihiko from Persona 3, but Vincent is definitely more good looking than him. Yeah, well, I am, all right. I'm a Londoner, just like everyone else. That's a problem, is it? Luca from Chrono Trigger? But Luke, Luca's a girl. Like, I'm, I'm doing like typically, typically male characters against typically female characters. Like, Vincent's on a separate list from Luca. Oh, most beautiful video game girl. Ooh, that's hard. I mean, obviously Tifa's up there. I think Lenneth from Valkyrie Profile is up there. Mm. I think Gwendolyn from Odin Sphere. Uh, uh. Zero, yeah. Zero or um I actually like two. But Jelly, Vincent is just one dude. Of course Tifa's up there. Of course Tifa! Tifa is just a gorgeous, she's beautiful physically, but also just like a great character, like so kind, so beautiful, so strong. Like Tifa is the perfect woman. If she wouldn't stop like hanging around Cloud, who's a loser, like get someone better for you, girl. I know you made a childhood promise, but like, come on. He can't treat you right. You would let one dude stop you from getting a remake? Yes, because he's the one that really matters. <laughs> I don't know about boys, they all look goofy to me. But Vincent is a man. <laughs> Zero always uh, top after Vita. Ah. Judith is, Judith is pretty. Um, 
he can't treat you right in bed. <laughs> no, Cloud is just, Cloud is a loser. Even in Advent Children, he, he just ditched her. And she keeps calling on him to check up on him and he doesn't return her phone calls. Just like, you're a loser, you suck. After you said you'd come back to protect Tifa as a soldier, but you like keep ditching her, like, ugh, Cloud is a loser, I don't like him. No, no, not at all, it's just that, well... Uh, I get it, I know what you're thinking. That thing probably don't even belong to her. Probably got another dive, didn't she? Yeah, I can see it written all over you, Chevy Chase. Well, I might have been thinking something along those lines. You're not going to deny it, Mr. Nanohodo. Alright then, I'm just going to come out and ask you straight. Do you pawn things that you steal from other people? Well, um, I don't know how to best answer that, really. Um... Suppose. Sometimes. Jelly just angered half of the female Cloud fan base. I- I'm sorry! Like, even when I was in high school, playing Final Fantasy VII, I was like, wow, Cloud's kinda lame. He kinda sucks. Which is why, the first chance I got to kick Cloud out of my party, I did. And my party, for the rest of the game, until the final dungeon, was Vincent Tifa Yuffie. <laughs> I love Gina's coin flipping animation. It is cool. You're not going to deny it either, Mr. Strong? Not this time, alright? I swear, that thing belongs to me. The disc that Mr. Woodbank is holding. <laughs> Perhaps we should see what he has to say about all this. Uh, examine Windebank. His sword's kind of cool. Other than his sword, I, I like he was cool in the beginning. He seemed very capable, and like this is what soldier does. I'm so capable. Like you need me to like take down this Mako reactor, of course. So I was like, okay, Cloud, you got it together. Cool. And then he just, as the game went on, I'm just like, hmm. I, I don't like him. On that matter, I think Sephiroth is freaking lame. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, Sephiroth's so cool. He's so powerful. Sephiroth is stupid. <laughs> I don't think he's the best Final Fantasy villain ever. The best villain ever is Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. I'm pretty sure I talked about this in a previous stream years ago. Reason why Kefka is the best. He's there from the very beginning. You know he's evil. And usually when bad guys show up in the beginning, like they get off in the middle of the story and then you find the big bad like later on. No, he's there since the very beginning. He poisons a whole town and kills off all those people. He does all these crazy evil acts as a normal person, and then it's like, boom, he's the final boss? Awesome, great, fantastic. It's not some otherworldly being just like, oh, hey, there's this alien that we need to fight now, or like, oh, hey, here's this tree from another dimension. No, it is him, which is so cool. He's, he's the best, but Sephiroth? It's just like, oh yes, I'm the best soldier ever. Oh, look at my long silver hair. And then he finds out that he's not like entirely human. He has Genova cells in him. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm not a human. I'm an alien. W what am I? Oh, but now I have to take over the planet for my mother. That he did not know about until he went to Nibelheim and read all of Hojo's like records or journals or whatever. So I'm like, really? Really? So Ed, your whole life up, up until then meant nothing, and now that you find out that you have like alien cells in you, you're just like, gotta do what Mother says. It's stupid. Sephiroth is stupid. I... <sighs> yeah, I said it. He's not cool. <laughs> I, I made some of my friends and coworkers so, so mad with that. <laughs> They're like, no, he's so cool. He's lame. He's stupid. <laughs> ah. Anyways, that was my Sephiroth rants. I'm sorry if people think less of me, but I stand by, I stand by my words. Mrs. Rod's disc. 
So if Ross going to be in your dreams tonight, you're going to say, I love you. Nope, nope, I hate him. He's lame, he's stupid. <laughs> Mr. Windebank, what exactly is this metal disc that Mr. Stoddard has brought in? Let's check. It seems to have hundreds of little tiny bumps on the surface. Ah, oh, this is a music disc, you see? For use inside a music box. In a music box? What? You don't even know what a music box is? Tch, you Eastern lot, I ain't too savvy, eh? How about you come to Japan and see how much you know about our culture, okay? Calm down. I know what a music box is, I've just never seen one of these discs before. The small protrusion on the metal disc encode the tune to be played by the music box. You simply insert the disc and set the machine going, and beautiful music plays. It's so incredible! Tell us, what tune is on this disc? Well, I'm afraid I couldn't tell you that. There's so many different types of music box, you see. British made, German, Swiss. I've no way of knowing which particular machine this disc was made for. Ah, I see. And that's in a nutshell. You wouldn't have any customers for an item like this, even if the young lady forfeited it. Really, I'm already offering more than I should at Penny. That's a pack of lies! You told me you did! You said it was... well... He? Who? Never you mind. It just ain't right, that's all. That does look good money. I know it is. It's gonna have some code relating to some case. <sighs> well then, you'll have to try your luck at another pawnbroker's, won't you? Huh? She's been in here before, of course, this little tatam tatterdemalion. Never saw that word before. I see. I brought some dubious articles or rather with her every single time, I might add. Dubious? What are you trying to say? I'm an honest customer, mate. So, is there something dubious about the disc she brought in today? Well, if only it were that simple. Sorry? What do you mean? What she actually brought in was a storage ticket. Ah, a storage ticket. So... Mrs. Strahd has actually come to redeem an article from you today, is that right? Yeah, that's right. A girl like me is a lot of stuff what needs storm. Alright, yes, that's definitely dubious. The article in question would have been forfeited at midnight tonight. But I should gave me the ticket for it and repay both the loan and the interest. I was obliged to return the article to her. But what was the article? Do tell us, Mr. Windebank. Why are we snooping in her business? The little scamp is wearing it, ma'am. Her coat? It's the overcoat that she redeemed. Oh. What? What's wrong with that? It fits, don't it? I mean, it's mine, so of course it does. So, what about the disc, then? How does that come into all this? Ah, oh, the disc is something else. A new article to pawn, if the girl and I can agree a price. Why do we care about all this pawn shop stuff? I'm confused. I thought you said that Mr. Strahd brought in a storage ticket today. It's really quite simple. Yes, the child brought with me a storage brought me a storage ticket and the money owed on it, as you say. For this heavy black coat, which you returned to her at care, as I'd understood it. That's right, yes. And rather unsurprisingly, as soon as the little ragamuffin put the thing on. She went right from through the pockets. Oh, you mean... What? Don't you know it's rude to stare at a lady? Ah, I see. So it came from the pocket of the overcoat, did it? If you mean this disc, then yes, exactly, ma'am. And she immediately tried to pawn it. For quite a high price as well. This is all rather suspicious, I think. Give it up. I'm just trying to pawn something like anything else would. Anyone else would. 
Mr. Strahd, may I ask who deposited the overcoat here in the first place? She's doing a job for someone. Dun dun dun. Um, well, me. It doesn't really appear to be your size. Me old man. It's me old man's, ain't it? Oh, me old man. Her dad. Is it Mr. Strahd? Yes, this is definitely all rather suspicious. Again, how does this lead into the main case? Oh, my way, Piers. Whoa! Who is this picture postcard English gentleman? A good day to you, ladies, gentlemen. What's your problem, eh? There is no problem, as long as you move yourself. I have a matter to discuss with the proprietor. Is he going to s I thought he was going to hit us. And if you intend to make a problem, I shall see you outside, little girl, for the hiding you deserve. Well, ain't it obvious? I ain't done with him yet. Yeah. If you think you're such a gent, you should know I'm waiting in line. Well, you are an impudent little brat, aren't you? As well as a pickpocket. Eh? Who, who are you? How do you know who I am? The question is, how do you know not who I am? How do you not know who I am? You haven't the courtesy to even remember the faces of your victims, it seems. What? You mean I? From you? Broker. Um, yes, sir. I believe this filthy po pocket thief has just redeemed an article from you, no? Y yes, sir. The article in question belongs to me. I demand for it to be returned at once. Oh, my. Now that's a lie. What are you trying to pull? Give me back my overcoat, you wastrel, and needless to say. Any music box discs, too. No, you can't have it. You just can't. It's me old man's, or was, and now it's mine. Goodness, Mr. Nadehodo. This is a very awkward situation. Yes. I think perhaps we should hear both sides of the story in a little more detail. So do we... Okay, so if we want to talk with him. But it's been two hours already. Oh my gosh, I feel like I really didn't um, play a lot of game today. I, I just chatted a lot, but it was super fun. It was nice seeing a lot of um, faces again. And it was nice talking about other games. I'm, go I'm going to um, look up more about the... Um, actually, am I going to look up more about the PlayStation Expo? I mean, I think I see I've seen enough and none of the games really make me want to look into it more. But it was nice learning about that. It was great talking about Final Fantasy VII Remake and Tales of Arise. Have a good night and don't dream about Sephiroth. <laughs> I'm not gonna ban you, but ew, don't talk about Sephiroth's toes. Like, toes are fine. Sephiroth's toes are not. Ew, no, Sephiroth's grody and gross. Ew. Um, but yeah, I hopefully, if I don't have any headaches or any crazy illnesses, I will pick this up on Tuesday and we'll really get into the meat of the story of Case 5. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. Have a great weekend and bye-bye.